those of you who uh, don't know who I am, I'm Phil Ferrali, I'm the village manager here in Glencoe, and I'd like to welcome you to our community open house uh, related to our water supply planning report. Very pleased you've joined us this evening uh, as we take an early step toward introducing our residents to this important community. The water supply planning report developed by Strand Associates uh, was presented to the Village Board on March 19th. Uh, tonight's discussion will allow for some public input and feedback on that report and underscores the Village Board's desire for an open and transparent discussion of this very important topic. We will be utilizing the input we received tonight uh, and at other meetings still to come as a significant component of the Village's information gathering and analysis process in evaluating the village's long-term water supply needs. All the comments, questions, and concerns that we receive tonight will be provided to the village board for their review as well. In terms of a bit of a roadmap for this evening, um, the structure of tonight's open house will include a general overview. I'm going to start that. Dave Mao, who's our public works director, is going to complete that general overview. And then uh, there will be a summary of the Strand Report that Chris Ulm, who is from Strand, uh, will be providing uh, after, after Dave and I speak. And then really the, the, the most important component of tonight's meeting is the breakout session, uh, which will be at the end of the presentation, which will allow all of you to interact with the village staff and our consultant uh, around the room, uh, asking whatever questions you may have about uh, the options and that have been presented in the Strand Report and for us to get your feedback and thoughts on that. Really the purpose for tonight is to provide some background and details about what we're trying to do here and um, to, to really talk through as a community the best means of providing a safe, dependable, and affordable water option for the community for our next set of generations. The goal for tonight is to inform and on the water system planning report and the steps the village has taken thus far, as well as to allow for really, as I've said, an informal chance for each of you to involve yourselves in, in the discussion. We want to take the opportunity tonight to better introduce you to this issue, what it means and why, and why residents should care, and really to have a chance to have a dialogue on the subject. I may have mentioned this before, if I haven't, tonight's meeting is strictly informational. Uh, we're just trying to provide some, some opportunity to, to have this conversation. Real quickly, I, this is just for our benefit as we're trying to get to know the audience a little bit. Um, I'm guessing there are people with varying levels of, of knowledge of the project. If this is one of the first times you've ever talked or heard or, or read anything about this, could you raise your hand and, and let us know? All right. We've got, I'm guessing there may be some people who are in the middle. They've, they've heard about it. They may have followed this. They may have read the report already. Okay. Anybody who's been following this from the very beginning, from when we started talking about this back in 2013. All right, good. So we've got, we've got the gamut. I expected we'd have that. And I hope everybody is going to take something away from tonight and, and have the opportunity to learn a few things. Uh, I've already mentioned a couple of folks who are going to be speaking tonight. The, uh, the rest of the staff that is present tonight, um, Don Kirk, our general superintendent from uh, in the Public Works Department, Alex Urbanchik, who's our water plant superintendent, Sharon Tanner, who's our assistant village manager, and Dave Krauss, who, who is our management analyst. A few things we're not going to be talking about tonight, and I just want to mention these because I think it's important to highlight where we are in this process. Um, the village board, the staff, and the community as a whole have a very long way to go before a decision is ultimately made. Uh, our consultants, as I've mentioned, are going to provide an overview of their report, uh, but there are many additional facts that require further investigation study and review before a final recommendation is evaluated, deliberated, and voted upon by the village board. So uh, up on the screen, you'll see several items that we're not going to be discussing um, in any detail this evening because, frankly, we're not ready to. Um, relative to a detailed project budget, 
beyond the preliminary engineering estimates that Strand has generated, the cost projections that you'll see tonight are strictly, as I mentioned, engineering uh, estimates that have been developed by Strand and don't fully account for all the potential costs of each option. These numbers are certainly very helpful to us as we start to evaluate the project's magnitude, uh, but they don't tell the whole story. Uh, we are in the process of gathering that additional data to determine the total cost of each of these, of these options that Strand has developed. Uh, as well, the impact to water rate payers, we are gathering additional information, including commencing a water rate analysis to help us to determine how these various options may impact the water rates for all of our water customers in town. Again, financing method, it is early, not knowing exactly what the impacts are going to be. Uh, it's too early for us to begin to hypothesize on what our ultimate financing may be. But both the water treatment process and the final plant size and capacity uh, are both policy-related issues that the Village Board is going to have to spend some time uh, thinking through. While Strand has made a recommendation in their study to utilize direct membrane filtration in the options they've prepared, the final decision, as I've mentioned, is really up to the board as to whether there will be uh, membrane filtration, conventional filtration, some mixture of the two, um, and that we are continuing to do further research on that uh, before making a, a recommendation as to the correct methodology for Glencoe. The same is true of the size and capacity of the Finally, the Northwest Water Commission is a topic that a number of people have asked about. Um, we were approached back in 2012 as we were commencing our process uh, regarding the Northwest Water Commission's interest in a redundant water supply. At this time, we have still only had very preliminary, preliminary discussions with the Northwest Water Commission to determine the feasibility of a partnership. They are currently finalizing a series of their own studies that um, have put those discussions on hold altogether. Uh, we are, at this point, it's too early to comment as to whether or not there may be an agreement, what that agreement might look like. We just frankly haven't gotten to that point. But I wanted to make sure that those points were, were highlighted to, to this group this evening. In terms of the process, I'm going to blow through this pretty quick. Uh, Dave is going to get into some frequently asked questions. but. Um, I've mentioned a few of these things already. Where have we been? Uh, this process started back in 2012 as a component of what the village does with all of its capital assets, and that is takes a look at what our needs are going to be moving into the future. Our water plant is approximately 87 years old. The EPA's standard is generally a, a 60 to 70 year lifespan for a facility such as that. And um, as is part of our normal practice, we begin to plan long before the need for actual replacement or rehabilitation is, uh, is before us. So this, be this began back in 2012. We brought Strand on in 2013 to begin the research, and they've just completed the water supply planning report. Where are we today? We are in the process of certainly introducing the issue to all of you, to the community, but also doing a great deal more research, as I've mentioned, few times tonight, there's a lot that we still need to know, a lot that we still need to delve more deeply into, and that becomes a very important part of getting us to where we're going, which is a, a village board review process that will commence. Um, the overall timeline that we're looking at before any sort of decision is made is still many, many months away. We anticipate could be up to two years before a village board decision is is actually brought, uh, or the, where the village board is actually at a point of making a final decision on this. So we are commencing a process of trying to introduce the topic, understand the issues that are out there, bring those issues back to the board, see what further study they might require from us, from other consultants, and then to ultimately bring back a final recommendation that the board will consider, discuss, and deliberate. All of that is going to be a component of a very extensive public engagement process. We're starting that. We've started it already with a pretty extensive web page that hopefully you've had a chance to visit. If you haven't, we will have the web address up on the screen as well as a QR code that will give you some quick access uh, to get to that page. 
but I encourage you to take a look at it, read through it. That is the beginnings of what is a very extensive and very long process. I'm going to have Dave come up and talk through uh, several frequently asked questions that we've received and give a bit more feedback or a bit more background on this topic. Dave. Good evening. Uh, thank you for, for being here tonight. Uh, my name is Dave Baum, the Public Works Director, and Public Works the Public Works Department has the duty and responsibility to maintain uh, the village's water treatment facility uh, as well as, as the distribution system. Uh, as Phil had indicated, based on some of the questions and comments received and in anticipation of others, staff has developed uh, frequently asked questions and posted the FAQs and answers on the village's website. As part of the introduction of the public engagement process, then I thought it would be helpful to share a few of those. Uh, why is the village evaluating this, the, the water system and plant? The existing water treatment plant was built on the Lake Michigan shoreline just north of Parkway Avenue in 1928. While the village has done a good job of maintaining the water treatment plant and modernizing the process systems over the years, portions of the infrastructure are nearing or have reached the end of their useful life. In addition to strengthening basic infrastructure, a fully modernized water treatment plant can offer many advantages, including state-of-the-art filtration technology, improved energy efficiency, and a smaller building footprint. Is our drinking water still safe? If we delay this project, are we jeopardizing water quality and public health? The current water produced by the water treatment plant in Glencoe is, is of the highest quality and meets every regulatory standard required of Lake Michigan water producers. Water plant staff regularly test and finished water for a number of regulatory control purposes. More information about water quality, including the results of our most recent 2014 annual water quality report, is available on the village's website. The reasons and purpose for the water supply planning report is not because of an immediate concern at the plant, but more about rational and proactive steps that need to be taken to ensure the village board is making a timely decision on infrastructure replacements. This is in line with our past practice of looking forward and planning our infrastructure needs. As highlighted above, if the board directs that we construct a new water treatment plant, we would not anticipate construction to begin for at least five to 10 years. What options are under consideration? Inland sites, including existing village-owned properties and other open spaces of a suitable size and location. Locating a new water treatment plant away from the lakefront would require significant improvements to the existing water distribution system due to the fact we would be changing the location of the supply source relative to the primary, primary location of the existing transmission main component of the system. And I would encourage you in the breakout session uh, to, 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 to wander to this side of the room. We can, we can outline that a little bit clearer, the, the location of our, the main trunk line of our distribution system and, and why that's important to the location of the treatment plant. What process has been in place to study these options? As mentioned, the village initiated a water system master plan study in 2013 intended to help guide the capital investment decisions that are necessary to maintain a source of safe, clean, and affordable drinking water for Glencoe residents over the next several decades. The study evaluates options including rehabilitation of the existing plant, construction of a new plant, and purchasing treated water from a neighboring community or water commission. Lastly, sh should the village decide to build a new plant, how long would that, how soon would that happen? As, as I mentioned previously, should, should we decide that that would not be initiated for five to 10 years, although certain activities, engineering and distribution system improvements might precede that. Excuse me, oh. excuse me. Could, could we ask you two guys to kind of move aside? You're actually blocking. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Both of you are each blocking. And Good point. <laughs> Thank sorry. you. Sorry about that. Thank you. A couple, of, a couple of facts on the existing plant. Uh, in 1925, the village formed a three-member water commission to issue bonds for the construction of a water treatment plant and pump station. The Glencoe Water Treatment Plant was built in 1928 for $500,000 with a design capacity of 3 million gallons per day. Improvements and the addition of two filters in 1952 
increased capacity to the current 8 million gallons per day so the village could supply water to the village of Northbrook. Glencoe provided water to the village of Northbrook until they constructed their own plant in 1963. The, the Glencoe treatment plant utilizes a conventional treatment process. You'll hear that phrase a, a number of times tonight, which was state-of-the-art technology in 1928 and is still in use throughout the Great Lakes region today. Conventional treatment draws raw water in from the lake into, into a deep suction well where it is pumped into the plant to begin the treatment process, which flows water from rapid mix to slow mix to settling basins where most of the particulates are settled out. The water is chlorinated to disinfect it and sent to rapid sand filters where the water is then cleaned of any remaining impurities. Finished water flows to the clear well where it is then pumped into our distribution system. That's probably the shortest description of our treatment process I've ever done, but in the interest of time. And we'll, we're happy to go into great detail on that, but for those that are interested... schematic drawing over on this side of the room. And uh, as far as current plant conditions, while the, while the current uh, water treatment plant systems and process equipment have been well maintained over the past 30 to 40 years, much of the existing plant's significant infrastructure is nearing the end of its useful life. Why was, it, why was the master plan uh, initiated? The village identified the need in 2012 to develop a long-term water system master plan to begin to identify necessary improvements in the, water, the village's water treatment plan to maintain production of safe drinking water for residents and other water customers. Like other village capital equipment and infrastructure systems, such as street sewers uh, and the like, looking ahead 15 to 20 years to plan and budget for replacement is the prudent and responsible choice. Maintenance costs to manage the current plant are increasing, and given the fact that much of the core building and equipment infrastructure in the plant is original from 1928, there are legitimate concerns that major system failures could result in long-term water outages. Additionally, considering new treatment process technology to meet future regulations and requirements do not easily retrofit into the existing plant facility. Why was the process, what was the process and the scope of the study? The village selected Strand Associates through a qualification-based selection process in March of 2013. In addition to having familiarity and experience with the village, Strand has significant water system expertise in treatment, supply, storage, and distribution. The study Strand was engaged to prepare evaluates a broad range of planning options, including rehabilitation of the existing plant, construction of a new plant, and the ability to purchase water from a neighboring community's water supply. The village initiated a water supply planning report at this time because water system improvements of this nature can take many years from the planning stage to implementation. The village recognizes its financial and long-term responsibility towards providing an economical drinking water supply to its residents by planning for improvements to an aging water system infrastructure today and has commissioned this report to begin that planning process. At this time, I'd like to introduce Chris Ohm of Strand, who's going to present us with a brief overview and summary of the report, and then, we'll, uh, then we're going to open it to our breakout time. Thank you very much, Dave. Uh, as mentioned, this is uh, uh, portions of the presentation that was given on March 19th. Uh, to the village board. If you want to see the full presentation, uh, it's available online at the village's website. And if you're really daring, or you like what you see here now, you can also watch a YouTube video of me presenting it. Um, and tell me how that, how that is after you watch it. So the scope of the water uh, planning report in included about three major steps. First, there was the general water system inventory. Uh, this included mapping and schematics that you'll see a lot of the, the inventory of the system that Dave has mentioned uh, on these boards over on, on the, along the wall. We also went through water demand characteristics. The village currently uses about 2 million gallons per day on average of water with uh, maximum days going up to 5.42 million gallons a day. We also had to do projections into the future. Uh, as you look for what size a plant needs to be, you don't want to design it for today, you want to design it for long term. Uh, 
uh, the plant is projected to need, or the village is projected to uh, see about 6 million gallons per day max days. We also perform a storage capacity analysis to look at water storage within the village. There's a 2 million gallon reservoir that currently exists, and there's a half a million gallon elevated uh, multi lake water tank uh, over by the Edens Expressway. The uh, uh, storage capacity analysis found that that was uh, ample storage for uh, if, if the village is producing 6 million gallons a day of water, 2.5 million gallons a day of storage is ample storage, even into the future. Step two was a water system model creation and analysis, and that's what generated this uh, uh, water distribution system board uh, over on that side. It was a, it was a, a computerized model of the water system. Uh, that, mo that model was calibrated using field testing to match field results. Uh, and then that model can be used to simulate uh, different scenarios, moving the plants to different locations to see how the system will uh, react to that. And then the third step I'll talk about in detail here was the future water supply analysis and then the study findings and recommendations. The future water supply analysis included two major considerations. First and foremost was consideration of uh, community impacts, including cost, community needs, control and oversight of the plant operations, available land, and minimizing disruption. Also very important, we had to consider the engineering feasibility of all the options. They had to meet best engineering practices, and they also have to meet regulatory requirements. So three main options were investigated, investigated for the future water supply. First, the purchase of water from neighboring communities were looked at. Uh, we also looked at rehabilitating the existing water treatment plant, and then we looked at building a new water treatment plant at inland locations and at lakefront locations. This figure, which is also uh, in larger scale here that you'll be able to get up close to, shows those options that we looked at. We looked at op water supply options from three neighboring communities, we looked at four inland locations, and we looked at three lakefront locations. First purchase of water supply from neighboring communities. We looked at Highland Park, we looked at Northbrook, we looked at Winnetka, and combinations of all three of those. Uh, Highland Park and Winnetka where Highland Park was able to supply the water on its own uh, to meet Glencoe's uh, demands. Highland Park and Winnetka could also supply, buddied up, Winnetka could not supply alone. We recommended going with Highland Park solely because getting supplies from two communities uh, would be rather uh, difficult and that's very rare. Northbrook was not able to meet the water demands of Glencoe. So this figure, which is also uh, over there, shows what would be necessary for a supply from Highland Park. It would require a booster station on Lake Cook Road and several uh, uh, thousands of feet of water main improvements uh, to extend the, the water down into the Glen Coast system. This, uh, the cost of these improvements were, seen to, were estimated at $11,717,000. Some of the advantages and challenges associated with this. Uh, the advantages is this gets the village out of the water supply business. Uh, it could also reduce or repurpose water production staff and associated costs. The challenges, there's a, perp a perpetual loss of control of the water supply and rates. You're not dependent on Highland Park uh, for water supply and what they deem necessary to charge you. You're also still responsible for water quality. Once the water passes the booster station, it goes into your distribution system that becomes the village of Glencoe's responsibility to maintain its, uh, its quality and its safety. Water rates for Glencoe residents would not only include the purchase and cost of water from Highland Park, but would also include the cost necessary to maintain and operate the water distribution system. Additional uh, water storage facilities would also be recommended under this situation. A couple minutes ago I said you have ample storage. If you're able to produce your own water at 6 million gallons a day, if you're not able to produce that water, and something goes wrong with Highland Park supply, it's going to be highly recommended that you have extra storage to buy some time uh, to get problems resolved. So if the village determines it appropriate to continue to produce water on its own, two options exist. Rehabilitate the existing water treatment plant to replace deteriorated infrastructure and equipment, or build a new fully modernized water treatment plant. 
First, we'll talk about rehabilitating the existing plant. Rehabilitation of the existing water treatment plant would include some additions to the existing building that you see there. Uh, as Dave talked about earlier, putting new technology into a 1928 footprint is difficult. Um, even if you're just replacing the, the processes in kind, uh, uh, the equipment is not the same as it was in 1928. Uh, so the building would expand out onto the beach. We've got this same graphic uh, over on the side here so you can take a closer look. To rehabilitate the existing plant was estimated at $31.2 million. Some advantages and challenges associated with this. Advantages, you would have lower initial construction costs compared to building a new water treatment plant. Construction impacts would be minimized. It would be all on village-owned property. There would be minimal change, but some change to the exterior of the existing building. And the village would retain control of the water production in this, in this option. Some challenges, higher long-term maintenance costs. You're still dealing with a lot of infrastructure that is nearing 100 years old. It's nearing the end of its useful life. Uh, unless you replace the whole thing, the pieces that you leave there are going to uh, have uh, higher long-term maintenance costs. Shorter lifespan than a new water treatment plant for the same reason. Most of the remaining site space will be filled with plant expansion, as you can see. And this would require temporary construction, uh, a temporary connection with Highland Park. To take that plant down and rehabilitate it, there's going to be water outages coming from that plant. So you still have to build the Highland Park connection during that process to supply water uh, during that time frame. We can, I can answer that uh, uh, later. Uh, this also adds new technology into 87-year-old infrastructure. That's another challenge. Building a new water treatment plant is the next option. Consideration of treatment processes regardless of location. Uh, this is where we talk, they talked about conventional water treatment process versus direct membrane filtration process. Uh, conventional is what you're using now. Direct membrane filtration is the latest in technology for surface water. Uh, one of many uh, new technologies for treating surface water. Uh, many Local and, and area surface water supplies are starting to use direct membrane filtration, but it's by no means the only option. This option was chosen, though, to prepare an apples-to-apples -apples comparison of footprint and plant sizes as we looked at all the site location options. So an analysis was done of inland water treatment plant options and of lake, lakefront water treatment. The inland options for the new water treatment plant included the site, a site on Dundee Road at West School. That's shown as number one. Horseway Drive and Cook County Forest Preserve District, shown as number two, was another site selected. The Public Works Garage Facility site, which is right up one direction there, there we go, was uh, number three. And the Village Water Tower site on the Edens was site number four. Of these four sites, the only one that was feasible was the Public Works Garage Facility site. The other sites uh, had higher costs, more impacts to the surroundings. It didn't fit in with the, uh, uh, with the area's uh, surroundings uh, or the culture of the, uh, of the area. Public Works Garage site was the only one uh, that was, was deemed to be feasible. The public works garage site would require a new public works facility. You're basically going to take up the, the footprint of your existing public works garage. It would likely require parking a parking structure to replace the lost parking uh, to the south of that. It would also require a raw water transmission main to extend from the lakefront all the way to this site. Some advantages and challenges associated with this. Advantages was it's the only viable inland option. It's also on village-owned property, and it's close to the backbone of the, water of the water distribution system. The challenges, it includes a costly relocation of the existing uh, garage and the existing parking lot. It has difficult site security. Uh, 
It has the loss of a public roadway. There's access and delivery issues associated with it. And it is not in the character of the downtown. The cost associated with that option was $65 million and $44,000. Potential lakefront options, we looked at on the existing lakefront water treatment plant site, leveling the existing uh, water treatment plant and building a new modern water treatment plant there. We looked at south of the existing water treatment plant site, and we looked at north of the existing water treatment plant site. And we have display boards over there uh, to, to go into more detail on those options that will be identical to what you're going to see up here. First, the lakefront location on the existing water treatment plant site. The opinion of uh, probable cost uh, for that, or the, for the engineer's estimate, is $47.8 million. Like I said, this one would level the existing water treatment plant site. There would be renovations that would be required to the reservoir, uh, and a, a new pumping station would have to be placed on the top of the hill. Some advantages and challenges associated with this. The advantage is it's all on village-owned property. Another advantage when compared with the, the rehab of the existing plant is there's freedom of architectural design. Final advantage is it's completely renewed water treatment plant with the latest technology. The challenges associated with this uh, is you still have to have a connection with the Highland Park, with Highland Park for water supply during construction. Obviously, uh, a longer duration than when you're rehabbing with this case because uh, uh, you're going to take the entire plant out the entire time. You have restricted access to the Boater Beach, and you have a higher cost than the other two lakefront options. Looking at the south of the existing water treatment plant, the opinion of probable cost for this is $47.8 million as well. This one, you can leave the existing water treatment plant in service uh, throughout, the, throughout most of construction. There will have to be some downtime. Excuse me, could you just clarify one question? When you say south of the and north. So when you say north of the current site, you're talking about our boating beach. And when you say south, you're talking about our swimming beach. That's correct. Portion of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it, the, the exhibits are difficult to see on the screen. They're easier to see on the side of the room. <laughs> Portion of two. Is good. Um, <clears throat> so advantages south of the existing water treatment plant is that the existing water treatment plant stays in service throughout most of the construction. Uh, it's mainly on village-owned property. Uh, there's freedom of architectural design. It provides a completely renewed water treatment plant with the latest technology, and it has a lower cost over the existing lower cost than over the existing water treatment plant. Some challenges: some property must be acquired. Uh, you still have to have a connection with Highland Park for water supply during construction, and it will restrict access to the Boater Beach. So you're saying even if we even if the option is chosen to build a, uh, either the swimming beach or the boating beach, you would still need a connection to Highland Park? Why can't you keep There's going to be a slide coming up, and I'll be able to go into okay. that. And I understand, here, but it'll be easier. Um, let me get to that slide. And then if I don't answer your question, south. So north of the existing water treatment plant was the final option we looked at. Again, the cost was the same with, as with south of the existing water treatment plant to build a new water treatment plant. $47.8 million. Advantages and, dis and challenges associated with that, uh, the existing water treatment plant stays in service throughout most of the construction. Uh, a portion of the village-owned property will be used. Uh, there's freedom of architectural design, a completely renewed water treatment plant with the latest technology. It provides a continuous beach operation uh, once the plant is all the way to the north it opens up uh, uh, where the existing water treatment plant is now. And it has lower cost than over the existing water treatment plant, which I'll explain in a moment. Challenges uh, are construction and permanent access will be difficult to get access down to that plant. Uh, property must be acquired. Uh, connection with Highland Park will be required, would be recommended during construction. Loss of a separate and distinct boater beach. Uh, would take place if the plant went to the north. And there are neighbor impacts associated with that. How many years construction would, are you estimating? Uh, two mm -hmm. years would probably be safe. 18 months and three years. Three years. 
Does that include the demolition of the existing plant in that two years? Yes. So I think this will answer your question. A summary of the OPCC opinion of probable construction cost is what us engineers like to call our estimate. Uh, and the addition of cost to purchase water during construction is displayed in this table. So the OPCC column there shows the construction cost that I just mentioned. And you can see that when you're building a new membrane treatment plant on the lakefront, it's $47.8 million. But if you're building it over the existing site, you have to take the water supply out for a much longer period of time than you do if you're building it to the north or to the south. Because the first thing you have to do when you're building it over the existing plant is destroy the existing plant. If you're building it to the north or to the south, there will probably only be two, maybe three months of operations that would take place that would take the water supply out. And maybe that could be minimized. But you can see that adding the cost to purchase water from Highland Park for the total duration of construction adds $3.7 million to the project, whereas for a shorter period of time, only adds $621,000. Yes? I'm not quite sure I understand the 3.7 because if the water is being bought, it's going to the households. The households will pay the additional cost, if any, versus right now there's costs of operating, and that's passed on, of course, to everybody in town. So isn't that kind of a wash? Because take their water or take it from the village, it's the same to the ultimate customer. It's, it's not quite that simple. And, and one of the many reasons why what I said at the beginning was that these numbers are engineers' estimates, is that there's a great deal more to it than just simply looking at construction costs and potentially the costs of, of the purchase of water. We do have to understand the impact to the rate payer during those interim periods and or in the long term. We do have to understand potential costs for land acquisition, the potential costs for other improvements that may need to be made to the overall system. These numbers are strictly related to the cost of a building with its requisite component pieces and the best estimate that the engineers could provide relative to that purchased water cost. So these are very preliminary numbers and, and really underscore the value of what we're going to be doing over the next several months, which is to kind of dissect the other issues that, that relate to the cost. And, and I want to add that when, when I'm asked at this preliminary stage in, in, in this game, in this, not game, in this study, do we need uh, a connection with Highland Park during construction? I, I'm inclined to say yes, you, you want that, even if you're building to the north and to the south. We may be able to, as we go down the road, design this in such a way that you don't need that $11.7 million connection and that you don't need to spend the money for the water purchase. Just back to my question. And that's 65, 47, 47, 47, 31. Does that include the 11 million? Or is the 11 million on top of 65, 47, 47, 47, 31? Okay. I, I, I understand if you your question. To Highland Park, it's going to cost you $11 million to connect to Highland Park. It does. Okay. Is it that does. in the $65 million? Or is that on top? It, it's a difficult question to answer. $5.6 million of that estimate is a connection to Highland Park. Why is only five and it's 11 to do it the other way? Because the 11.7 million also includes the construction of another two million gallon storage okay, and pumping so station. You're talking, about, you're talking about the increase in right. okay, Correct. Thank you, that clarifies. Yeah. Okay, so, but, so if I'm not I'm sure I heard the correct, if I understand his question and your answer, you're saying that the cost of connecting to Highland Park is included in each of those estimates, whatever it would be. Correct. And whether there, we're connecting for three months or a year or two years, the actual cost of building that infrastructure connecting will be the same. It has to be done the same way, whether it's a short term or long term. So we're going to build that infrastructure and well, then build a new water plant. Part of it. Part of it. $5.6 million of the 11.7 million. The, the, the extra capacity. Conditional storage. So you're going to build the extra pumping station and the line across Green Bay in all of these scenarios. Correct. That, right, and, and that is the recommendation where we're at now. I guarantee you will need it if you do 
if you demo the existing plant, I don't think you can make it for two years. Uh, there, there are existing connections that will not make it for two years. You have to bolster that connection with that. Got it. Got it. You might be able to design your okay, a system. Yeah. Thank you. So can I just ask? So, fair question or fair point Bill makes, which is that this doesn't consider a lot of other costs, like the long-term cost of ratepayers of the obviously cheaper cost of $11 million right. construction. Right. But it's pretty hard to make a reasonable assessment of the value of those without knowing whether the present value of some rate differential would approach that increased cost. Is there any kind of assessment yet as to... And that's what, that's what we're going to be undertaking, is a, is a wholesale rate assessment and evaluation to understand because, yeah, your point is exactly right. Boy, if I look at those numbers, which one seems the best? Yeah. Um, Has anybody talked to Highland Park? We have talked with Highland Park, and, and those, that process is well underway. Don't, don't, don't misunderstand. When we are looking at these, we, there's no decision that's been made until we have a better sense of what those overall long-term costs are going to be. Um, and, and that rate analysis is huge as a component of that because it does take into account the individual rate payer, all of these do, certainly, because there's going to be a capital cost associated with all. But when Highland Park becomes the provider, if that would be the case, you do have to understand the Highland Park rate structure and how that impacts the rate payers today and moving through the, the next 30 to 50 years, which is kind of the, the window that we're looking at. So yes, the answer to your question is absolutely, we, we are going to be doing <coughs> you don't have to go into a lot of detail if this is in the study, which I have not read. But uh, two questions related to Highland Park. One is, what's the age and assessment of their physical plant? Uh, you know, they can supply water, but you know, are they going to need to do massive improvements uh, down the road? And, and I don't, sorry, part, just sorry. The second one I was just going to toss in is, um, are there ways? Source from another community to buy insurance or something like that to protect them in the case of an outage. Okay, to answer your first question, Highland Park just began the operation a couple months ago of a new direct membrane filtration plant uh, that was just finished. The second question, I believe, was is there insurance policies? Yeah, to, 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 to mitigate, you, I think you said that the most significant argument against sourcing from Highland Park was the fact that you would lose control, but that basically you would be at risk if there was an interruption to their water supply. And I'm just wondering if there's ways to mitigate that risk. I, um, you know, I don't... Emergency interconnect. Emergency interconnect with other communities, yeah. Uh, the, the difficulty is not always the cost, the difficulty is the logistics. Sure. Right. Sure. So I, I think the, the answer to that question is that it's not quite the worry that the cost is going to be exorbitant, but how long would an outage take place? And how much are we able to rely on our other emergency <coughs> interconnects, which we do have in place, but are not necessarily designed for long-term support. They're designed for a short, yes. shorter window. Well, how big a risk is that? That's part of the assessment that we're, that we're working through. I got one more slide left. Following up on his questions on Highland Park, obviously Highland Park with this brand new system created an overcapacity because without the overcapacity, they wouldn't be able to sell to us. And I'm just kind of curious from your perspective why they created an overcapacity to that degree, but we don't need to create that overcapacity to any further degree, meaning are they going to run out of water at some point in the future, which I guess is part of the due diligence? And secondly, how did they get over the problem of building a new plant and not having to rely on somebody else to sell them water without the additional price? Okay, may I ask you to repeat the second case of that? But I don't know why Highland Park built in more capacity than they needed. Um, I know that some entities build more capacity with the intent of being able to sell it to other communities uh, in the long run. Highland Park does sell to Deerfield, Bannockburn, and Lincolnshire uh, as well. Uh, they also had more communities that they sold to in the past 
that have, have changed, so I don't know if they held that capacity where it was at. But that's why some communities do. And the second part of your question? The second question was, with all of our different construction options, we have to temporarily shut down our system and use island parts. When they built theirs, and they had to, did they have to shut down their system and buy oh. from somebody else? Uh, no, they kept. They were able to keep their existing plant in operation, and they built the new plant alongside that plant, and have taken that that existing plant. Out. And that is available to us also. The existing. Plant. Why wouldn't we do the same? That's one of the. Those yeah. are yeah. Two, yeah. two of the yeah. options that are that are under consideration. Yeah. Want to hit your last slide? Yeah. So. <laughs> Uh, recommendations. If the village determines it's appropriate to become a wholesale purchaser of water, uh, we recommend you consider purchasing from Highland Park as a sole source. If the village determines it's appropriate to continue to produce water, uh, we recommend you consider construction at the lakefront to minimize the costs and impacts to a majority of the village residents and reduce the amount of additional infrastructure. So, so what we'd like to do now is give you the opportunity to talk one-on-one -on -one with us as we mill around the room and to give you the opportunity to mill around the room to take a look at the exhibits that Strand um, has included in its, its full report, which I also encourage you to take a look at if you haven't had a chance to. It is posted on our website. Um, but we'll, we're available for questions, and, and we'll be here as long as you've got questions to ask. Sure, if you'd like to. Yes. Site north of the treatment plant currently and site south of the current treatment plant. Um, aren't there covenants on some of the land that you will be using, and how do you plan to deal with those covenants? There are covenants on some of that land, and that's part of the evaluation process as to whether or not that knocks the issue out completely or not. Keep in mind, this is an engineering study. Engineers don't look at those things, engineers look at feasibility. And so that becomes the village staff's responsibility based, based off of the information generated by the engineering study and now we have to understand whether or not there are other mitigating factors outside of the logistics that um, would keep an option off the table or, or keep it on the table. Yeah. As long as there's a forum for public comment, uh, a couple of the other days you mentioned I'm not going to be able to be there. Uh, so I managed to come here before leaving town today and tomorrow morning to kind of express my view. I have looked, I've read the entire strand report. Uh, by the way, my name is John Rubin. I, I live at the little house on one of those little pictures up there. And I have lived in Glencoe for 52 years. I have sailed, with, just in, in the interest of disclosure, I have sailed, this is the 50th year I've sailed with Glencoe Beach. Uh, one of the reasons my family moved to Glencoe is because of the, of the beach. And we love it there. And it's, it's recognized in all the village studies and all the park district studies as, as one of the most important assets of the village. And it's what really makes Funko special. And so I did I did go to the park district meeting, and I did go, I'm on the Lakeshore Advisory Committee, and I did go to the last village meeting. I did actually read the entire strand report from, from front to back. And the purpose of my comments is not to create a schism or, or an argument, but to present what uh, what some people would, would feel, I think, from talking to other people about a couple of the choices that were presented uh, just out front and maybe say these really aren't great ideas. I think there are, there's a lot of really great information in the Strand Report. I think it was very thorough. And I do understand the need for looking into a situation where you have a water treatment plant that's going to be 100 years old. But there are, are a couple of choices that I think that you might want to throw off the table to begin with. I mean, I did actually present a proposal to the Lakeshore Advisory Committee, which was unanimously ad adopted to present to the Blackpool Park District for taking these two options off the table. One of the options is building the uh, building a new water treatment plant to the south of the existing plant. Now, uh, I, I just have a lot of experience. I actually worked for the Park District for 10 years when I was a kid. Uh, so. Uh, one of the things about Glencoe that's great is if you look down Park Avenue, the street was designed to provide basically an infinity view of the lake. There are people that come from all over to look at the view over Park Avenue. If you look at my house and look at Park Avenue and look at the structure of the new water treatment plant, 
you will have the village up in arms. I guarantee you they are not going to accept a building that's built right under the view of Park Avenue. Yeah. If you can take it off the table, it's not going to happen. Right. Okay? And I would, I would, I, if anybody disagrees with me here, please, I'm, I'm, happy, I'm happy to hear a disagreement. But I think what, would, what, what you're going to see is, is that, is that from a, in a purely an aesthetic point of view, I mean, this is open space. This is one of the best views in the Midwest. You do not want a building at the bottom of that. Now, with regards to the, to the land on the other side, of course, as a, as a voter, I'm prejudiced. This is a special place I've gone to for 50 years. As a matter of fact, I was there that they, they dedicated Pearlman Park. I was, what, 13 years old or something like that. And I remember it. And I remember that this was a park that was to be given in perpetuity for recreational voting purposes. There is even in the covenant a stipulation that there will not be a building that would be built on the property below that could be seen from the house above. Now, you know, whether or not it's decided that for practical purposes this is the best place to build, to build this, this water treatment plant, that plus other state laws that are in existence are going to mitigate against selection of that as a site. So you're going to wind up, not from me, but from I think other people, with a lawsuit that's going to hold this in litigation for years and cost the village a lot of money, and at the end of the day, is not a, a, not a great idea. So I think that those two ideas are probably, you know, in my opinion, should be taken off the table. That's just my opinion. I agree. Along the same line, yeah. as, as in this one, yeah. there, is there a site, I mean, somebody a few years ago, and I got, I, one of the things I, I wanted to mention was, you know, this is a you know, situation where people wanted to build things in Glencoe is not new. Uh, in 1968, the Park District actually wanted to put a swimming pool structure into the bluff, and it came up for a referendum, and the people almost unanimously voted it down. Uh, a few years ago, somebody wanted to build a hotel off the end of the 17th, <laughs> and a hole in the Glencoe Golf Course. And people, they had a big meeting in Village Hall, and I, don't know, I wasn't there. I heard the people almost throwing eggs at each other. Right, um, this was not a good idea. Although, um, so, so the point is, is that I mean, people are not going to want a, a, a big a building. And, and, and I read someone this morning that it's going to take up about three acres. Uh, they're not going to want a, that was for the site of the town, I think they said. But in any case. They're not going to want to be building, but did anybody, not to bring back the hotel site, did anybody, or did you guys look at, is there land off the end of the golf course near the highway, on this side of the highway, on the east side of the highway? Let me, let me speak to that and, and try and answer your questions at the same time. This, did everybody see me over? Yep. These red pipes, these, this is a, a, a display of your water distribution system, okay? This is your water treatment plant. This is your water tower out off of Eden's, uh, the Eden's Expressway. These red lines are, are large diameter water mains. Your system works by sending water out through that large water main and then pushing it to the north and to the south. The further you get the water treatment plant away from these two main lines, the more <coughs> cost you have in bringing transmission mains back to it. When you put a water treatment plant out here, First, you have to bring a raw water transmission main, a sizable raw water transmission main, through here. Mm -hmm. You've got a 10-inch pipe now underneath the Skokie Lagoon. Uh, that's way too small. The dynamic, the, the hydraulics don't work. You'd have to put another pipeline back to the main system. That's going to cost a lot of money, and environmentally, I, I, we're going to get a lot of resistance and feedback and pushback. Going underneath the lagoon with two large pipelines. That's why that one, and I, I, I believe it's also a, a, a hazardous. Uh, well, it's, a, it's a closed, it's a closed IEPA closed landfill. Yeah, we, we we currently have pipe under the lagoon to feed our elevated tank, and that's a, it's not an ideal right. situation. The golf course, which isn't by the lagoon. The, the other site uh, on that we looked at on Forestway Drive, just south of Elder Court. Uh, is Forest Preserve land. The Forest Preserve has been very clear that they do not sell their land for somebody to build something on it. It's Forest Preserve land for a reason, to be open space and, and enjoyable. You feel the same way about the beach. Understood. <laughs> Understood. Uh, and, and, uh, 
I mean, just saying why the, the yeah. inland options have fallen off the table. The other one uh, was the, the criteria we looked at was was open land that was in proximity to that trunk line of our distribution system. So that's that's why a west, you know, and some of these were suggestions that came out of the community when we were in the early stage. That's why the west, the, the open land west of West School, was even on a, on a consideration. I think the comment was, in addition to to costs and transmission needs to, to, to build off of that site, that's a, that's a that's a residential district today that we don't have a, 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 a municipal facility in. Granted, we've got a municipal municipal facility in, at the beach, but it's been there for, for 87 years. And so the, the comment was, in keeping with the character, that, that would be a tough be a tough zoning cell. I, I uh, think when you said in keeping with the wouldn't character, happen. I didn't see the west, the, the, you know, the, the water tower, not a character. Correct. <laughs> but, and, and, but, and, and, but, and, and, but there's major hurdles yeah, for that yeah, side. Yeah. And there's really nothing, somebody that talked about near the golf course, there's really no no, there's no open land outside the golf course that's not forest preserve property or botanic garden, which is a, a part of the forest preserve. This also for this. I was talking about our golf course. This one, yeah. Oh, we can build it on theirs. <laughs> way away from from the way your distribution is, is set up. That's the other so challenge with that. If we want to go with the Highland Park option, what would we do with the existing water plant? Well, we would we would still have we would still have a presence if we if we went to a, a supply from an outside agency or, not, or, or a neighboring community, we would still need to have a presence at the lakefront for for uh, uh, the res the reservoir would have to be maintained and a pump station would have to be built in proximity to that reservoir. Uh, down at the lakefront, if we if we totally relied on an outside source, that 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 property could conceivably be repurposed once all that improvement was in place. Sorry, uh, is, is cost of whatever that refurbishing or shutting down included in that no. 11 million figure? No. Okay. Well, I think the demolition, the, the, the demolition, the, demolition but any any sort of, of rehabilitation, that, that would be a policy discussion the village board would need to involve itself in. Um, that hasn't approached. We haven't gotten to that place yet. And this may be outside the scope of this discussion, so I don't know if you tell me that. You know, if we end up buying water from Highland Park, are there any state you know, federal rules about how much they can charge us for the water, or is that a, a kind of a free market discussion? It, it, it's not so much regulated uh, by the state or the federal government in any way. It would certainly be a negotiation process with the city of Highland Park. and. Um, Again, we've had very, very preliminary discussions with them. We haven't gotten anywhere near understanding what that would be yet. But well, let's say any of the three lakefront sites are chosen for what are people saying. Or, or let's let's take one for example. Let's say the voting beach is chosen as the site for the water. So now we have two years or more. I mean, we hope for two years. When you say two years, it probably means four years. So four years of construction. Um, go demolition, construct all this going to be. How is that going to impact use of the swimming beach? Even if it's as far away from this path, because the majority of construction is going to be the body <coughs> beach, there's going to be trucks, right, going up and down there. They're going to have to build extra roads to get out to where the body. I mean, what would be the impact on the best possible circumstances? Is there any chance that the swimming beach could even remain open during that? I think so, but, but cl clearly there would be, be a shared use of access down to there that would have to be coordinated very carefully with the park district. Uh, uh, th those are those are legitimate concerns and a legitimate question. Those would have, that would have to be part of the evaluation uh, of, 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 the, of a potential site. Uh, particularly, you know, nor uh, construction on the existing site or, or north uh, I think I think it's it's our professional opinion that, that the boating beach or the uh, the bathing beach could remain open. It would just take some coordination. Uh, construction to the south of the existing plan would be a would would enhance that challenge. So we had you had rehab the old facility, build the, the existing facility with, with a little addition. Yeah, rehab and how would that, but that you say. You, Kind of constrained by your technology, you can't put in the new technology, or would you be putting new technology in the old place? A 
a little bit of that. We, we would, we would, part of the expansion, part of that expansion would be to introduce some of the new technology in addition to, I mean, a, a big part of what. Now, Glencoe just won an award for the second best water in the right. country yeah. about four years ago. So, do we need a new technology? As, as noted earlier, we, at this stage, we would not be married to necessarily having to upgrade. Is, is, is the new technology more expensive than the existing technology in terms of the cost? On the Currently, it is. The, the questions that we are evaluating as a component of the ultimate treatment process is trying to anticipate changes in EPA regulations, mm -hmm. uh, things of that nature, which we know are coming at some point. Um, the flexibility of membrane uh, technology is greater than the flexibility of conventional. That doesn't necessarily mean that's the decision point, that, that that's the reason for one or the other. But that is a consideration that we've, we've, got, to cons we've got to look at as we look at an ultimate choice. How many choice. villages of 8,000 people have their own water treatment facility? That's hard to oh, say off the top of my head. Communities yeah, that are smaller than Kenilworth has its own, Winnetka has its own. Virtually every lakeshore, about 12,000, 12, yeah. Uh, virtually every lakeshore community uh, between, here, between Evanston and Waukegan has their own facility. Um, and there are a few, well, there's actually just one that's a non-lakeshore community. That's the smallest. Other than Kenilworth, I would say we're probably the smallest, yeah. Lake County one. In Lake Bluff? No, not, uh, not oh, Central that. Lake County, yeah. the one that's owned by County of Lake. Uh, Chawa? No, no, not Chawa. There's there's one up near, uh, I want to say, Zion. That's right. It has yeah. very small. Zion Beach Park. Park. It's, it's unincorporated Lake County. Yeah. Construction. Okay. Uh, so the plant itself is owned by Lake County. Yeah. Uh, so County of Lake. That's not, not Jawa. Not Jawa, no. Jawa. But that's a small plant serving yeah. a small plant. all at the aggregate uh, relationship of uh, capacity and demand in all those communities? Just curious. Is, uh, how would, what's the aggregate over capacity of everything from Evanston up to Highland Park? Mm -hmm. I don't believe Well, that. Evanston's the largest plant in the state mm -hmm. outside of Chicago. the city of Chicago. Mm -hmm. uh, they had all the capacity in the world. In fact, they, they, uh, that's, where, that's where the Northwest Water Commission you know, buys its finished water. Uh, we, we didn't do an evaluation because it becomes a, because there's a practical limitation for our, to support our system where, where it becomes cost prohibitive if we're talking about new new transmission mains, either, either either treated or untreated water of great distances up and down the North Shore. So we looked, we looked at Winnetka, we looked at Northbrook, and we looked at Highland Park, our immediate neighbors. And of those three, really only, only uh, uh, Highland Park has the capacity to take us on for, for our maximum day demand. Um, you've probably talked about this already, but uh, I'm sorry I wasn't able to be here earlier. I went about a month ago in anticipation of this meeting, and I was at the uh, Niles uh, uh, Village Board meeting, and they were discussing this issue. And uh, they and Morgan this plant has had in the past um, a, uh, a surplus, uh, the ability to produce more water, it, is that just too far away, uh, those communities over there, or is there a way that if you had a surplus and you uh, were able to pass some of the costs on, that it could somehow be um, useful for both this community Is there something that can yeah, be done, or is that just too far away? Strand was just retained by Niles to do a water system study uh, and to create the model, uh, coincidentally. Because um, Niles is purchasing from Chicago. Chicago rates are going up. Niles, uh, actually Morton Grove, Skokie, um, there's two other communities that 
can't remember right now, but if I looked at a map, I could probably tell you, are all looking at teaming up, forming a Jawa, and purchasing from Evanston, uh, or from Northwest Water Commission, which is right, that's right where the Evanston to Northwest, Northwest Water Commission also purchases from Evanston. Glencoe, I don't think, could be cost competitive with those two entities as far as serving them, if that's what you're talking about, building a plant to serve them as well. Yeah, and again, we're, we're 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 rated at eight million gallon per day production today. Our max our max days between five and six. We simply don't have the surplus for that kind of a need. And uh, but the reason I was raising it because having heard this, I don't know, were you the person that made this presentation? No, no, I'm I'm no sir, didn't I, I didn't think it was you. Um, is that if you're thinking about building a new plant, uh, and if we're a way that this community could, in effect, make money, some money, by doing that, and that they could, it will be an incentive for them uh, to uh, spend the money for some of the piping, obviously, it's a longer distance than from here in Northbrook, uh, then that might be a way to go, but I don't know, maybe. It's it's that, that, that logic makes perfect sense, and the same logic applies that if Highland Park just went to the expense of building a new treatment right. plant with excess, excess production, why not look into our purchasing water from them? Because that might ultimately be a less expensive option for us. Well, the there's, I mean, it's, it's, it's not it's, it's not a coincidence it's though that, that no, it's not a coincidence that those communities that are seeking alternatives now are all at the mercy of the city of Chicago and other suppliers where they don't have control over rates. So that's that's an important element, and that's that's you know stay tuned because the, the water rate analysis we. The, the tail end of the report does does show that comparison, that long term comparison to purchase the option of purchasing water from Highland Park versus if, continuing. If we, if we don't fill the water meter and we do buy water from Highland Park, do we still retain? I don't know if you know anything about the state law. Do we still retain the right to build exactly. a water treatment plant at a later date in the event that you know they decide to jack up the rates in 20 years? I mean, maybe you make a contract <coughs> for 20 or 30 years and then. That we're going to triple your rates, so we'll build our own treatment plant. So once well, you stop producing water, is there that's any, the is regulatory there any question? I mean, we, we have a we have a water allocation from the state. That every, every community does uh, that comes into play. Uh, uh, well, you retain your allocation because you're still taking lake water. Yeah. Uh, you know, unless you unless you started taking from a groundwater. So theoretically, you can always rebuild your plant in the event. <laughs> but just yeah. you know, the. The time value of money, you know, a, a forty million dollar estimate today. Where is that going to be in twenty five years? So, you know, that's a good, that's a good idea. So it, it would seem to me that the, I mean, obviously the purchase from Highland Park is less expensive. It enables you to free up access on the lake. It solves a lot of problems. The downside would be an increased cost in the rate differential they charge you, and some uncertainty in the future. And I guess my question is about that latter one. Is there any limitation on the ability to enter into a really pretty good long-term commitment with a as a condition to making a choice to go in with Highland Park? It seems like you know, that's a 50 year contract, whatever it might be. You know, you might, that might be the first thing you look at. I believe Highland, I, I believe Highland Park has uh, uh, made all of their contracts with all of their communities, the terms of those synced up. And I think you know, last I talked with them about this, they would want to maintain that to where they're renewing all of their contracts at the same time, and I am fairly certain it is not as long of a period as, as you would hope for as a purchaser. But you would think two things. One is that you could, we're in a little different position because we have an option that some of the other communities might not have as readily. That is, we're in a position where we could choose to supply ourselves. Obviously, they have other places they could buy from. That's, that's the right, I get that. But I mean, we have one option that other purchasers might not have, might give us. Um, and the other is, I would imagine that you could negotiate something that says, yes, but no more than whatever you charge your residents, plus some percentage for distribution costs, whatever it might be, in a way that it would be politically unacceptable for them to jack the rate up too high because it would be a it would have an impact on what they charge their own rep. And I don't think you get resistance you're, you're, from you're, you're, residents. You're preaching from the from the how to negotiate a water contract book. There's no question about it. Uh, to a certain extent, some of that is easier said than done. And and you know the one thing we have less of a negotiating chip with Highland Park is 
we don't have a whole lot of other options and they do. Not that's not to say that that, that keeps everything buyer options, but their other buyers don't have access to the lake. I, again, you guys you guys are you you are you are preaching from our from our songbook as to the things that we're looking at and beginning to uh, dissect because understanding their contract structure with their other customers is a big component of understanding what the cost is going to be potentially to Glencoe. So and also talking to some of the customers who have left them to find out what why. Because didn't you say some people had were getting water from Highland Park and the no village of Riverwoods water. was purchasing water from the village of Deerfield who was purchasing water from the village of <laughs> the city of Highland Park. <laughs> the village of Northbrook did a nice end around and managed to get Riverwoods to purchase water from them to take excess capacity that they had. I know this because I was working in Deerfield when we lost Riverwoods and then I started working in Northbrook when we gained Riverwoods. So, uh, but but the, the, the reality is it, it is not easy, as was being discussed before, to switch around because anytime that happens there are major infrastructure changes that come into play with any of those decisions. So when we talk about the potential of buying from somebody else, it becomes very important to understand what our out might be down the road and what that might cost us. And to not necessarily factor that absolute cost in, but to factor that potential into the decision making process. The intriguing part is Sorry. all of these projects have that same infrastructure cost. You're going to have A certain to component of it, yeah. A certain component of it. Dave, sorry. One comment and then one question. I feel fairly comfortable that the village will be able to make an analysis of what it will cost to go to Highland Park just for one, the first, the infrastructure, and anticipated 25, 30 years of additional cost to each person buying water from them. Because the cost will have to be higher because they have to make it just like we would and they want to sell it at a profit. So there will be some increase probably in our water bills. But does the current water plant just break even or does the village make some money so that if we went to Highland Park, then money has to come out of the village budget? That's a good question. Because, and you can jump in on this too, water <coughs> production, distribution, two parts. If we take production away, distribution remains no matter what. We don't do away with a water component in the village. Chris mentioned we're still responsible for quality of that water at the point at which it enters into our borders. So we still do always have to maintain our own water mains um, and all of the ancillary infrastructure that goes along with that. Which so metering all that. Paid by it, it is subsidized us. certainly by the rate. No, that no doubt. you're selling us the water. So, so my point being, part of the rate that you're paying right now goes toward that distribution component. That rate, that portion of the rate would not go away. So the portion of the purchased water from an outside community would be on top of whatever the component of the water rate that's toward distribution would be. Assuming for just a moment we use the existing site because politically we have squeaky wheels in town. We would complain if we move to the north move to the south because that's what people in Glencoe do. Um, very articulate speaking. <laughs> <laughs> very passionate <laughs> articulate. <laughs> very articulate. <laughs> um, it, also, the benefit it, of the it will have its cost, but as you point out, there will be um, there will be additional costs even if we went to Highland Park because not only do we have to do the full eleven million but we will have costs that are maintaining the existing system, there will be a difference. So my question is, you only can do estimates at this point and over the next, when will you think that you would have a grasp of what the difference, what it will actually cost the residents to keep its own water there versus obviously the increased rates from Island Park 
increased costs that aren't in the current budget for maintaining the system. There might be something additional over the next 25 to 30 years, but what is that to the customer versus what they might have to pay? Otherwise, because in Glencoe, sometimes we're willing to pay a little bit more to control our own life, and et cetera, et cetera. The, the data collection and analysis is underway. Okay. Um, I, I can't tell you an exact timeline for when it will be complete, because I think it's more important to be accurate than it is to be fast with this type of a, of a, of a there was community actually issue. A graph in the Strand before. Very, yeah, very preliminary. Very preliminary look at that. Looked at, 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 at the prices crossing over in about 30 years. Uh, right. It actually being cheaper for about 30 years and then being more expensive. But it was very, very, yeah. very rough. There was right. a comparison of purchase of water from Ryan right. Park to uh, a plant. But, but they did, that wasn't the whole expense. It's picture. not. Yeah, it's, it's not. not. That it was, was very preliminary. Would be, so yeah. it would be valuable. I would anticipate we're going to have more clarity on that as we near the end of this calendar year. But it would seem to me that the, the variable there is you can, you can make a prediction with all the uncertainty that goes with that about what the present value is of those two costs, both bonding costs and our, the cost to us as rate payers and cost to us as taxpayers and we're the same people. So mm -hmm. all of that goes together. And so you can project that the two variables are What's the value of opening up access to the beach or closing access to the beach? And what's the value of, what's the value of knowing that you have some internal municipal control over your water supply over the long term? You can't quantify them. Neither exactly. of those are quantifiable. <coughs> I mean, they go the opposite They're direction. quantifiable here, generally, and sometimes here, depending on, <laughs> on your feelings on the issue. But, but you're absolutely right. This is not just about costs. It does come down to what is the right overall selection of, a, of an option for the community for the long range, as I said early on. The, the, how do you maintain a clean, uh, easily deliverable, and relatively affordable supply of water to the community for generations to come? This is, water is the most basic service that the village provides. It touches every resident <coughs> multiple times a day, and it's one of probably the more underestimated values in this community, having your own water supply is an important thing. Is it the most important thing to keep that? That's what we're trying to, to establish. So it's, it, it's a lot of heart and a lot of numbers that, that go together for that. I'm gonna to jump to her real quick. Um, one thing that I haven't heard tonight, and it may be, you know, I'll able to be considered, but if you have the connector to Highland Park, it obviously is also a connector from Highland Park to Glencoe. I mean, two ways. If for a contingency, is there a value on a contingency if um, Highland Park has a failure in their water system, would they then be able to use Glencoe as a backup? And conversely, would if when, if Glencoe kept their own water, would they have this with that connector? Would they we, have a contingency backup? That's a good question. There, we, is there a value? And we currently have we currently have emergency interconnects with all of our neighboring communities. Mm -hmm. Those have those have limitations on ne neither side could could wholly support the other system through those emergency those current emergency connections based on the set the capacity of the pipe. <laughs> those, those are more to handle uh, regional outages or regional support. For example, we uh, two years ago we uh, we we. Followed through and completed a long a long range plan and upgraded some water main on the north end of Sheridan Road for fire flow and pressure improvement. Uh, during that time, we were we we counted on that emergency interconnect, the existing interconnect with Highland Park, and it and it was able to serve that region for for some downtime while we did that transfer. Our current plant can operate off of any of our three neighboring emergency interconnects. What's proposed here in that twelve million dollar number is is an upgrade that would in the short term would allow Glencoe to rely solely on, on Highland Park. And, and even after the plant was, say, say that was done for a plant, a plant replacement, following completion of the plant, that system would still stay active and would, that would be an incentive to Highland Park as well that both communities then would have a more reliable, a greater capacity where we could, we could provide meaningful support to the other, for whatever reason. There's, there's times Highland Park had a, had a blowout on one of their main Transmission mains on the bluff a few years back, and we're in, in kind of a pickle on the 
in the summer months on, uh, on, on emergency supply, and we, they opened up everything around them. And in those instances, you don't have time to plan and design and construct. It, it's an immediate need. And so, so it would be both the short-term need that we would have for construction, but that would be a, that would be a long-term benefit for, to both communities with, with an enhanced uh, interconnect. Good question. Just maybe one last question. Because um, I have pretty good faith in the Public Works Department and the village to hash through some of these things. Um, water, it sounds like, is going to go up regardless because either it's going to go up because we're paying for Connect with Highland Park and they're going to charge more or it's going to charge, the village is going to charge us more because they have to build a new plant at some point in time. But oftentimes the borrowing of money, let's call this a $50 million project, will match some other bond issue that suddenly gets paid off. Have we looked, I, I, I imagine you already have, but is there going to be at some point in like five years, 10 years, some bond issue that gets paid off that we slide this in so that the tax bills kind of become a wash? We haven't gotten to a place where we have a very clear understanding of exactly if we were to construct, when that would take place. As, as Dave mentioned before, it's out there five to 10 years. Um, the village does have some debt that will be retired in about 12 years. Um, and that is always a consideration as we try to time out our capital needs. And, and that's been our practice for many, many decades. Um, but that certainly is a component of, of the review Further than that, we have not delved too deeply into financing. There are a lot of pieces and parts that could go along with that, low interest loans that come from, from the federal government, things like that, that we have to investigate and, and take a look at. But. Um, that raises a question which I didn't think of before. I thought that the, the water bonds and the, the cost of uh, building a plant <coughs> So there wouldn't be a tax increase anyway. There would be an increase to what we're paying, but not some tax. Increase. We haven't gotten to that level of, as, as I mentioned before, one of the things that, and you weren't here at the beginning, so you wouldn't have seen it. One of the things that we're really not prepared to discuss tonight in any great detail is financing for this. Uh, because this really means a rates, financing. no doubt that rates in this, we, we don't have any debt associated with the water plant right now. Um, rates are a component of repayment of any capital costs, certainly. Whether the rate could sustain the entire cost of the debt is something that we have to evaluate. We've not gotten there yet. Uh, the, the questions about, uh, I, I think you raised this question about with Highland Park, if they, if we had a, I don't know what you would call a most favorable nation uh, situation where we would have to get the same rates that their people are getting. Um, I don't remember what the situation is now, but my recollection is that that's what Chicago does, and they were able to uh, put some of the costs onto these other communities, and so they are still, in theory, charging the other communities the same rate that their rate payers are charging, but maybe I'm incorrect about that. That's, that's part of the analysis that we're going to need to understand a little bit better from the perspective of this is new ground for us as a community. This is not something that we've typically done all that much investigation on until now, and so we are investigating how well, that was assuming structured. That, that was correct, which I'm not saying it is. Then the situation where if we bought it from Highland Park and they decided, gee, you know, maybe some of us won't be around at that time, but if you're looking in the long term, uh, maybe 30 or 40 years from now when the contract expires, and they say, gee, we think that the uh, these other people have to bear more costs of the pipes and so on. And then that, then you get into a situation like Niles, Morton Grove, and Skokie, where they all of a sudden are being charged more, not just to make a profit, but because they, they, the people, the professionals in the operation are able to figure a way to... It's, it's certainly, them. it's the control yeah. right. issue. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, I only... Uh, the city of Chicago, I know for a long time, I think they are implementing meters for their own residents, but for a long period of time, a 
majority of the city of Chicago's residents and businesses were unmetered. Mm -hmm. They were estimated amounts. Uh, the meters that were going out to their suppliers were calibrated probably daily and very accurate, getting every penny that they could. Uh, the city of Chicago, just like everybody else, is experiencing the rapid deterioration of its water main system. And I, I, think, I think that that was the driving force realizing that they have to replace now 70 miles of water main a year, that they had to raise rates. Well, I was just trying to respond to the two gentlemen who asked a good question about a correct. profit. I don't think you have to have a, be making a profit for the correct. people who sell the water to decide that they can jack up your prices. Correct. Right. And, right. And, and Highland Park could all of a sudden realize, hey, we need to be replacing right. a lot more water main. And that's not, so that's not taking... That's the only point I'm right. trying to So make. You're, you're, you're spot yeah. on yeah. with that. Talk about the the uh, arrangement with uh, Northbrook about the pipe that goes to Northbrook. Is that the <coughs> We just mentioned uh, for those of you who don't know, we mentioned early. Dave mentioned early on that we used to sell to Northbrook in 1963. <coughs> Northbrook um, constructed their own water treatment plant on Dundee Road, just behind their fire station, um, and they actually have a, a intake that runs through Glencoe. The details of which I'm not really familiar well, with. But many would think that was a missed opportunity for the village in the 1963. Yeah. Can you give us a little bit of detail? I, I, I know what I wasn't here. You were. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't mean that. From what I understand, of the, having worked both in Northbrook and here now, um, the, the, the decision was well, Northbrook was growing in the 60s pretty dramatically, uh, late 50s into the 60s, and um, they said, to their supplier, we were their primary supplier, uh, that they needed more capacity. The decision at that time was made not to increase the size of our plant fairly dramatically to accom accommodate their uh, added need. And so um, in s I don't know the details of the negotiation. This is well, one of those great what, interests. What I was asking is, does that give you any, I, I think the answer is no to my question. Somebody doesn't have to open the door. Does that give us the ability to tie into the any leverage oh. over Northbrook in order to say, gee, we, we, have a, we, have, we have no greater connection to them on an emergency connect today than we have with one that can park. And there is no agreement between the village of Glencoe and the village of Northbrook as to that access. They, they own the 150 feet of lakefront that, that their uh, pump station exists on and their water main runs under various public lands, uh, but there's no agreement in place. I think Dave now is right. It was, a, it was a miss Okay, so we don't have any way to use that to help us with this situation. Not particularly, no. I guess I wanted to throw it on the, uh, to me at least on the Island Park thing. I, I um, am a relatively new Renko resident. I haven't been here for 50 years, but if, if uh, if we, you know, handcuff you uh, around all of the Glenco options and you know force you into a you know, Highland Park only option, I, I worry that any negotiation with Highland Park would be negatively impacted. You know, they'll know that they're the only deal in town, and then you know, I, I would like to uh, to negotiate that. That's uh, a consideration. So you know, I, I hope that you know as part of this process we, we understand that. You know, foreclosing that thing at this point might not only be difficult for the process, but also uh, create a problem for you going forward in your negotiations. Um, is there, a, what I, I'm sure the answer is no, but is there a way to, instead of shift the water from, if, if you built a double the size of the plant, just for the sake of argument, and uh, you shift the water instead of to the places we were just discussing where it is, is uh, looking at. Is there a way to physically ship it by, uh, by a vehicle, by either trucks or by uh, water, by barges to another place? Is that economically feasible? Not economically feasible or practical. Yeah. We invite you to take a look as you're, as we'll be here for a little bit. Um, but a couple of things to note, we have up on the screen, I've had up there for a while, the website 
that we've, uh, the, the web page of the village's website that has been dedicated to this particular topic. Uh, we have, as I mentioned before, a dedicated email address. What we're doing is as we receive emails through that email address uh, relative to questions about this, we're answering them to the best of our ability at this point and reposting those questions and answers to the website. Um, encourage you to take a look at it. We've, we've tried to make it as comprehensive as possible. Tonight's presentation as well as the video of tonight's presentation will be uploaded onto the website hopefully by early part of next week. Um, and we do have two additional meetings coming up on Monday, June 8th at the Glencoe Union Church and Saturday, June 27th at the Glencoe Public Library. Those are going to be a little bit different in um, format than tonight was. Uh, the Glencoe Community Relations Forum is actually hosting those events. Um, Dave and I, and I'm not sure if Chris is going to be able to be there or not, but I think for one of them maybe he will be, um, are going to be there. Just uh, will provide a very brief presentation and then much, of, much similar to how we have had this this evening, have kind of an open dialogue of, of conversation and questions. And again, in, in interest of trying to gain as much feedback from the community as we can. It won't be different content than tonight, so if people are wondering if they should come to all of them, I'll just make that as a disclaimer. You don't have to. You're certainly welcome to. But you won't necessarily learn something new uh, because we won't be creating new presentations for each of them. But um, this information is available on a, on a handout as you walk out the door on that table uh, with the QR code if you don't want to type in that whole long uh, web address. But, Thank you for, for being here tonight. We really appreciate actually the, the dialogue that we've had and hopefully you've taken, some away, taken something away from you, that from us, that will be helpful to you. All right, thank you. Thank you.